somebody told you like commercial real estate's dead, like what would you say back to them? They're dead. <laughs> or they might as well be because the, the implications of that statement ripple through, you know, people not even intimately involved in uh, commercial real estate. I mean, look, I'm, I'm not a generalist, so I don't subscribe to even pre COVID when I got asked this, asked these questions and I've done a lot of panels and, you know, they, they want you to engage in that. They want you to make these generalities. And obviously the statement of real estate's location, 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 it really is. So each region in each category is going to be different. So I'll dissect it from the perspective of where we are in the New York metro area, obviously being the hardest hit uh, statistically from COVID-19, from deaths and hospitalizations and everything. Um, you know, I, I don't think, the, the thing that attracts me to commercial real estate is that it's a practical behavioral of humans. And um, it's, it's, yes, I'm an expert in commercial real estate, but what's bigger than me in my expert opinion and anyone's expert opinion is the market and what humans want. And pre-COVID, humans wanted, you know, a variety of things, which were evolving, particular on the retail side, with the advent of online and Amazon, this concept of, you know, urban growth where people want to live, work, play, not own a car. Um, and again, those general statements were made and they just weren't, they were accurate, but they weren't accurate to paint the whole picture because for everyone, because I've been saying this for eight years, the suburbs are going to explode, the suburbs are going to explode, and everyone was critical of millennials. They changed the way we live. And I would always say, the 23-year-old is going to be 44 one day, have two kids, and want a yard, period. That's human behavior. That's going to happen. So um, I think to answer your question, I mean, there will be some macro implications. I think that office space in Manhattan, not the borough in Manhattan, Will be the hardest hit region and category in the commercial real estate space uh, but that's simply because most people populating those buildings are using forms of mass transit to get in there and when they're in there they're getting in that elevator to go up to their building on park avenue and i think that's going to lag furthest behind before people feel comfortable i don't think it's going to go away by the way i think it's going to lag behind i think what's what's obvious we do a lot of multifamily development and what's, what's happening that we're seeing from the front lines, from phone calls of other projects that are in the middle of leasing, is that the Brooklyn resident, the Jersey City resident, and this was happening before, but it's accelerated it, are looking for more space, looking to get a little further out. The person that lives in downtown uh, Westfield or Red Bank is now maybe looking to get a little further out, a wall or cold snack. The person who lives in Cold snack. Maybe your parents' age is ready. Maybe this was the pusher who says, we're out of here. Let's go to the Carolinas or Florida. So I do think there's a trickle down. I think that, you know, on the, on the living side of it, I think the suburbs are going to, are going to explode. Supply's low, demand's high, and this isn't commercial. But, um, and then I think on the commercial space that uh, multifamily market rate apartments in suburban areas that used to be less desirable from the development, the capital markets, the institutions, everyone wanted Manhattan and Brooklyn and Jersey City. I think these are going to become more attractive because of the fear of, you know, density of humans are going to create lack of demand. Now, I think that's going to be short lived. I think Jersey City will come back and Hoboken will come back. Um, but I think short term, that's what you're going to see is, is people accelerating. And that's what I think this virus has done. It hasn't changed things, I don't think, so much so, although the fear factor is the biggest change that wasn't there. It's accelerated the natural course of human behavior. You live in the city with your dog, you get married, then you have the kid, then you move to the burbs. So on, on and I'm going to break it down, and I'm sorry I'm rambling, but uh, I love this question. But the office side, I do think, um, it's funny, eight years ago, everyone said uh, suburban office space is dead. Eatontown, Warren, New Jersey, Somerville, Berlin, all over the state I am. And it's dead, you know, everyone wants to be in the cities. And now you're seeing big companies and even smaller ones 
start realizing, like we talked about, I worked from home. I was happier. My family got along better. I saw my kids more. Uh, maybe I can be as productive. And if I live in Bridgewater, maybe I, or Wachung, maybe I can lease space in Warren, New Jersey, instead of going to the city. So I think you're going to have that. And I think that's going to trickle down. I think it all trickles down. That's what I think. Little by little. I don't think there's going to be a, a mass exodus per se, although we're going to see that shortly, but it'll go back. So I think um, that's how office and multifamily will be affected. 